Understanding rotations in Rocket League is basically like understanding routes in football or really any positioning in any other sport. And if you don't get it, it doesn't matter how amazing you are at everything else. If you can't run a route, it doesn't matter if you're fast or if you can jump really high, you're gonna basically be useless. So let's take Frank for example. Frank is a mechanical god at Rocket League. Frank is known in the Rocket League community as someone with grand champion mechanics. One time, Frank scored a flippery set goal. This made Frank very happy. Oh. oh, yes! <laughs> and after that, Frank started looking at Rocket League very differently. He started to feel invincible, like he could do anything if only he could just get his wheels on the ball. He became that kid on the basketball team who didn't want to run back and play defense. He just wanted to yell at everyone to pass him the ball after the other team scored. <laughs> Here's kind of the point I'm getting at. It doesn't matter how fast you are to the ball or how consistent you are at hitting ceiling shots, for example. If you're slow and inefficient in your rotations, you're going to lose more games than you win. And you're gonna lose to people who aren't as good as you. Like you'd beat them in 1v1. Now, I'm not saying that I am Frank. Though on some level, I can relate to Frank. I play with and against players all the time who are, let's face it, not near as good mechanically as I am. Now, there are others at my rank though who are, and there's some who are better. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm by far the best in champ two, champ three in terms of mechanics. I definitely don't think I am. There are just lots of people who are not as skilled mechanically, yet they're able to consistently beat players who would probably beat them in a 1v1 because they understand this one concept really well, and that is rotation. So basically, because I've sucked at this, I understand really well where people usually go wrong because I go wrong in those areas. And there's usually three main areas where rotation really breaks down. I'm calling these the three S's of rotation, and I'm going to go through each one of these. Also, I hate to do this, but make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I know people don't like that, but I'm gonna sort of announce something really cool that I think a lot of you guys are gonna be excited about. So either stick around for that, or you know, if you don't wanna watch the video, just skip to the end to see what that is, whatever works. Also, if you're looking for a video explaining basic rotation and what it looks like. I have a video that I'll put in the link below. Otherwise, Sunless Khan has a video that's probably way better than mine. You can check either of those out. But here, I'm gonna basically be trying to help you guys just get better at rotation. This is for those of you that understand at least somewhat what basic rotation is. You're just not really doing it all that well. So that's kind of the goal of this video. So the first thing is basically the speed of your rotations. And there's a bunch of ways that this can play out. Sometimes it's your momentum. So you'll often find yourself watching what's happening in the play. And because you're watching and trying to be ready to react, you've actually stopped moving altogether and lost all your momentum. So let me see if you guys can relate to this scenario. You've went for a challenge and you've fallen into your opponent's half. So now your teammate is alone and you're in the process of rotating back. And maybe it's a 2v1 or a 3v2 depending on what mode you're playing and you know your teammate or your teammates are kind of in a bad position and you realize after a few seconds that you've basically just kind of been driving down the field slowly like you're hardly even moving because you're watching to see what happens and you're waiting to see if your teammate gets scored on. I don't know, maybe I'm the only person who does this, but I feel like I'm not. Instead, what you should be doing is using all of your speed, everything, dodging, whatever you got, whatever you have to do, wave dashing, to get yourself back so that you can be behind that person no matter what happens. Even if you think, dude, my teammate's probably gonna, you know, screw this up. So you're just like watching them waiting for it to happen. You have to be getting back as fast as you can. And here's the big area where speed is important in rotation and it's kind of similar to the last one. Players often sort of dilly-dally. Sorry, I can't think of a better word and I feel really old saying dilly-dally, dilly-dally. A lot of times players are too slow when transitioning between the one and the two position. So after a pass is set up, players, myself included, forget to rush back into that back spot. And I think sometimes this is because they aren't sure when they hit the ball if they will have the option to go hit it again. And this is really a huge difference between pros and lower level players. People like Justin, and squishy, they know absolutely when they hit the ball if the next shot is theirs or not, because they know before they hit it whether they're setting up a pass to themselves or not. So in other words,
forwards when they come up to a shot, if they pass it to themselves, they are immediately going for it because they already know that's what they're doing. But if it's a pass to a teammate, they're immediately rotating around with as much speed as they possibly can muster to get behind their teammate. Often when we hit the ball, we're kind of waiting around in this middle section. And in doing that, we've not only failed to back up our teammate, they don't even know what we're doing. So we need to use our car to communicate to them what we're doing. So if you set up a shot and you immediately go up for it, they know that they can just back off. But if you set up a pass and you immediately start rotating around, they'll know that they're free to go up and attack. You going away from the ball and rotating is your way of saying to them, hey, this is a pass. So use your car to communicate what you're doing and exaggerate it if you have to. Either go for the shot as fast as you can or rotate as fast as you can. Don't hesitate, I guess, is another way of saying it. All right, the next thing is separation, and this plays out in a couple different ways. Most of the time, players will be too close to their teammates. So if you watch pros play, especially in doubles, the separation is basically as big as it can be while being able to still stay in the play. And this makes it so that there's no guessing whose ball is next. There's virtually no double commits in high level doubles, sometimes in threes, but even that is rare. Now, you don't wanna be so separated from your teammate that you're actually separated from even being relevant in the play. You just want enough space behind them and enough space across from them. So the worst position you can be in is directly behind your teammate. That means that you're not giving them enough space from behind in case something goes wrong, and you're not giving them enough space horizontally to be relevant if they do set up a successful pass. So this comes into play too when you're actually taking a route for rotation. You always want to rotate away from your teammates, not at them. Usually you want to rotate around the pitch towards the outside. This is why there are those 100 boost containers on the outside and not right in the middle. They're there for you while you rotate. So if I do happen to be rotating on the same side as my teammate, I like to go up on the wall actually, or even almost up on the ceiling, because it gives me a good view of what's happening and it clearly says to my teammate, hey, I'm out of your way, I'm on my way back, you can go ahead and get in the play. All right guys, the last thing is spacing, and this actually gets at the position that you should be in. And this is kind of where basic rotation comes in as well. In threes, I like to think of a proper rotation as a triangle, like an ever-moving triangle. Sometimes it's more of a right triangle, sometimes it's more of an obtuse or an acute triangle. Yes, I had to look these terms up because I've forgotten them, but it's always a triangle. The worst position you can have in Rocket League is a line, like a vertical line down the pitch. That means you're not using the pitch to your advantage at all. Whether you're in twos or threes, you want to be rotating behind and across from your teammate, at least somewhat. Now sometimes it's clear that the ball is going back into your half behind your teammate, and in that instance, you know, you want to just get behind your teammate. And I was actually doing a coaching session with someone recently, and this kind of gets at what I'm going to talk to you guys about in a bit, and I was sort of showing them the tension that you have when you're behind your teammate, especially in doubles, and they're either trying to set up a pass or just challenge in your opponent's half. You want to be in that place to be able to score if they make a great pass, but you also want to be ready if the ball goes back into your half right over your opponent. Maybe they lose a challenge or they just hit it to the goalie who then clears it back behind them. You want to also be ready to go and challenge the ball in that case. Now there's way more to this than just what I've said here. Rotation is very complex and really the ideal way to improve at this is to have someone look at your gameplay and give you tips that are personal to you. Now here's the thing I told you guys to stick around for. A few months ago I put out a survey for this new project that I've been working on and you guys basically responded by saying that you wanted coaching. That was the thing that you were most interested in. So we've officially launched a project a couple weeks ago. If you don't already know what this is, it's called Gamers Ready. And I've got a link below if you want to check it out. And basically we have, you know, some of the best people in the Rocket League community who you could find to coach you. So we have people like Jake and Musty and a bunch of other top 100 players and other people who maybe aren't even top 100, but they're just great coaches. So if you are maybe a lower ranked player, you could think about also hiring maybe a champ coach or whatever you want. But we realize that not everyone wants to actually pay for a coach, and that's completely fine. We're working on building up a content team, and we want to be publishing just like really great content, guides, tips, interviews, 
training packs, all of that kind of stuff for free. So if this is something you want to be a part of, you can also just go join the Discord and chat with people in the community to kind of get a better idea what's going on. But yeah, if you are interested in hiring a world-class Rocket League coach to help you get better, then head over to Gamers Ready, check out the coaches, see what you find there, and maybe you find somebody that you'd like to hire. Because that is hands down the fastest, best way to improve is to have someone personally look at your gameplay and help you in that way. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover in another video. I'm wanting to make more content that you guys find really helpful. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.